Oh, hey. How you guys doing? It's Henry at Moore's and Flowers. Good morning. Uh, I just did the video for announcing my Super Clean Products giveaway. Make sure you check out that video and follow the four steps for you to enter. Three lucky winners are going to get that great gift box of Super Clean Products. I absolutely love it. You got a week to do it. Election day is the day I, uh, day I uh, pick a winner. Anyway, this morning some nut wants to see this uh, track dry snowblower that I had for like three years or so, you know? Uh, I had it listed for like 500 at one time, but because we've had a lack of snow the past couple of years, I dropped it down to like 200 bucks. I'd be happy to get rid of this for like 150 bucks, you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, let's see if this starts up. It's got Earl in it. I remember I took it out because I was going to sell it a couple of months ago. It's got absolutely no gas in here at all. I'm going to go get some gas. Just put some gas in here. Some choke, full throttle. Let's see if it primes. It does seem like it's priming. Awesome. Very pleased. So as you guys know, this is the uh, V-Twin Briggs that I got from uh, Nick from Medford. He, uh, when he got it, he said the guy told him that it worked, but it had a bent push rod, right? So um, he bought another push rod over here from this set. And I forget why he didn't put it in. But anyway, he just gave up on it. He didn't do it. And so uh, he gave it to me. And uh, he says it runs. Apparently, all you need to do is put this push rod back in, and you should be good to go. We're going to try doing that. Uh, I've never really worked on a V-twin so much, so I have to figure out which side is the intake and which side is the uh, exhaust. The uh, intake is going to be the aluminum fatter one, right? And then the steel one is going to be the uh, exhaust. I did check the valve clearances because after we put this back together again, you have to do the valve clearances before you can put the uh, valve cover back on. So I want to try to make sure which one, which side is the intake, which side is the exhaust. And uh, it's set at four one thousandths for the intake and six one thousandths for the exhaust. Same as the single overhead valves. So uh, I'm going to figure out which one of which s side is the uh, intake and the exhaust. So I just took two seconds to look at it. I, you know, uh, it's obvious, right? Because look, here is the intake manifold. Here is the exhaust, right? So obviously this one here is the exhaust, which means we need the steel one over here. And the intake is going to be the aluminum one. You want to shine a flashlight in there to make sure that you're touching it and you and it is and then it came with these I'm I'm just thinking the orientation is this way because it is pit be able it's able to pivot you know like that and because this is the divot over here and this is the recessed hole 
I'm assuming it goes in like this. Again, I've never done this before on this type of engine. So I'm just playing it by ear. Just going with the evidence, you know? I know you guys know what I mean. It's five sixteenths. Pretty convenient. Inspecting a little bit. Seems to be okie dokie. I was looking at the throttle and the choke. It seems to be okay. Like I said, I've never worked on... Oh, now that, that, that has some resistance there. Oh, there we go. Okay. So that's pretty tight over here. I mean, I'm not sure whether or not I was supposed to push it in all the way, you know, tight. I'm thinking I do, like it's fixed, you know what I mean? I should put it in tight and then be able to adjust these screws here. So I'm going to just push it in tight. In other words, torque them down. Yeah, that's super tight, you know what I mean? Shove the screwdriver in here. I found top dead center. I think it's the compression stroke. I loosened this torque thing over here. So being that this is the um, being that this is the exhaust valve, I'm turning the inner one to tighten it, and that seems to be it. And now you actually do the opposite by tightening the outer nut, whereas usually it's tightening the inner nut that would get it to work. It's the opposite of that kind. So that's a good drag of six. I'm tightening the inner one. Good drag. Wow, I don't know why I can turn it so well. It's the outer nut you gotta tighten. Drag is pretty strong, so I'm just trying to back it off just a little bit. Don't break it, Henry. All right, that's pretty tight. And that drag is pretty tight too, but you know, it's four to six, but it really could be five, you know, it could be seven. Depends on your strength too, if you think it's too tight. I mean, that's pretty tight but not so tight, you know what I'm saying? Okay, now let's do four on the intake. And I can't even get it in there. All right, it's in there now, but... Let's loosen this one up. Damn, I could, I could, I can hand loosen that nut, and it still feels like it's kind of tight. I guess that's what's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, look, this is this is hand loosening it all the way, and it's still pretty tight, you know.
Okay, so it drags pretty well at four, and in, and the exhaust drags pretty well at six. So now I'm just gonna clean this up and put the valve cover on. And I'm not gonna be able to test this yet because I don't have a tractor that is going to require a um, V-twin that has a separate choke and a separate throttle. I wanted to show you how that, how it went over here. This area over here is for the choke, right? The wire would go here for the choke. Here you would stick the throttle cable into here and secure it over there. And if you can move the throttle governor lever here, you can see that it has resistance. See? So I think that's it. I'm gonna go get some brake cleaner and clean that out. I'm spraying some brake parts cleaner for my friends over at Lucas Oil Products on this cloth over here, just to get the grease and dirt off of the contact point of the valve cover. The valve cover gasket is actually in very good condition, so I think all I have to do is just pop it on. You know what I mean? I'll show it to you. See? The gasket is already on here. No tears. It's smooth. No no uh, uh, erosion from it, you know? Nice, clean um, contact. So I'm going to clean the inner part of it, too, and... Apparently, I only have three of these bolts to secure it on there. Uh, these look like three eighths, not hard to find. So I'll find a fourth and we'll be able to put this baby on and also shove in this. Uh, look at that. When the uh, when the bent rod hit it too hard or something, piston actually hit. Is that the piston? Yes, the piston actually made this contact uh, the uh insulator contact point there. Well, I hope this works. But well, we won't find out for quite a while, but I just needed to get this engine out of the way, you know what I mean? For you enthusiasts, I actually want to know too, this uh, engine model number is uh, 406777. Spec 0139E1. So 406777, that's the, uh, that's a, that's this type of engine. Uh, other than the fact that it uh, had some kind of fire over here, I do have the cover to it, but this cover is very expensive and it, I don't know, it'll do its job. So uh, hopefully this thing will run. It seems like both connecting rods are connected, you know. It seems like the throttle and the choke levers are the way they're supposed to be. And you just gotta, I just gotta find a uh, two hole muffler. So look has the uh, pulley on here too. And then the uh, electric PTO goes on this shaft over here. So I have to find another 3 8 bolt, put it on here. Uh, as you can tell, I'm just basically tying up a few loose ends here, getting that snow blower started. Uh, I actually have another nut who is interested, who has been bugging for, for a few days on my one of my Toro recyclers for uh, listed for 185 and I just went outside and started it up it started the first pull runs great it has the Kohler engine on it I know my friend Jason doesn't like the Kohler engines but I absolutely love them uh, I find that they actually surge less than the other ones but let me find another 3 8 bolt and then we can put this one to bed for a while until I need it Okay, that's good enough. I'm gonna ungap this, because it's touching. Make it better. And I don't even really have the spec to it. <laughs> I just look at it and go, ah, it looks about right. You know, you, you see enough um, spark plugs in your life. And you just kind of know, you know. About how much you got to do. Got the plug gapped and I'm gonna replace it back into the engine. This is one of those uh, plugs where it uh, has the two tips you know so it has like a double spark or something. I actually like those and I know that there are kinds that uh, are three sparks too. I haven't tried those yet. 
course, I never buy them. I just get them from engines that I've gotten. So, I think this engine could be good to go on testing, you know. Um, I'm going to find a place for this. I've got so many engines sitting around. This is a big boy. Really big. Really heavy. How about that, huh? I actually have a lot of engines now. So I'll give you guys an update on the amount of engines I have. This is the 18.5 power built uh, engine that I got from my local friend Mark from East Northport. It's, he said it smoked. I changed the head gasket on it and I'm going to try it when I get a chance. If not, I'll swap out the piston. You guys know about this. The uh, 20 horsepower V-twin that I just uh, replaced the uh, push rods. Rocker arms, did a valve clearance, replaced the valve cover, replaced the spark plug after gapping. This is a 12.5 Kohler Command. Uh, I kind of forget where I get this from. Uh, I think this is off that snapper. It was faced the wrong direction, remember? Um, I have to remove the plate on the bottom as the pulley is stuck. Uh, but I think that might start. I never tried it. But I know that's a good engine, I think. This is the engine I got from uh, Larry and Bobby, and uh, I couldn't find anything wrong with it other than it missing a head. I put a head on from another part, and uh, I've got the shrouds on there, and I think that might work too. This is the uh, Kohler Courage that I rebuilt. I still have, I reversed the valve clearances, so if I ever plan on using this, I need to put the valve clearances 7 and 5 instead of 5 and 7. And I got to put Earl in it. Also, the uh, spacer between the carburetor and the uh, engine block is wrong. So uh, one of my subscribers sent me a uh, spacer. So when I get a chance, I'll do that too. I don't think this will run because um, I it has different cams in it, right? The twin cams, they were different from the regular ones. Uh, they were like less beefier. And it didn't have the hole for the... ACR, compression release. So this has no compression release. So I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, this Kohler Pro 17 I got from Nick from West Islip. I just had to put it together, remember? It's missing a air cleaner, a clearing cover, and some other stuff. Oh, and a dipstick. This is the 13.5 flathead you know about. Uh, I need a new block for this because it has no compression. So I've got really one, two, three, four, five six engines that I could use for future projects. As you guys know, soon I'm going to be dealing with the Husqvarna 2346 XLS lawn tractor that I also got from a tip from Nick from West Islip. And uh, my friend Fearless told me, I'll bet you 10 bucks that that 23 horsepower V-twin Vanguard, which is a very, very valuable engine, uh, is not uh, stock on this. Well, it is a 23, and if you look at the model number, it's 23, 46 XLS. 23 means the horsepower, 46 means the deck width. XLS is the model or spec on it. So, unless you were just so lucky to find a Vanguard 23 to replace it on a stock 23 tractor, I would think that this is stock. Uh, like I said, I do need a starter to figure out if any of this stuff works. And when I do start working on it, I'm going to take the valve, not the valve covers, the spark plug out and see whether or not both connecting rods are connected. Because while turning this, I do feel some compression, but I don't feel a whole lot of compression. Also, I trickle charged this battery. The battery came with it. It's a 350 cold crank amps, right? And I charged it for a full day and it still shows 12.4 uh, volts. So I think it, Holds a decent charge, but not really 100% sure. Also remember, this has two ignition switches, there and there, and I don't know why. This is a starter off of a Toro. I'm gonna try this to see if it works because I was looking at pictures for this and it, it looks different on the top here, you know what I mean? I'm gonna try this, see if it uh, fits on here. 
If not, I have other starters too. But I have to make sure that it's a metal ring gear or a plastic ring gear on the starter. This one's plastic. From the videos that I saw, they all showed Vanguard engines with either a plastic or a aluminum ring gear on the flywheel. In which case, if you have an aluminum or plastic ring gear on the flywheel, you have to use the plastic ring gear on the starter. Okay, otherwise you'll trash it. If this is a uh, steel flywheel, then you need the metal ring gear on the starter. But I'm gonna try a couple of starters for this. I doubt they will fit. If they do, that would be great. But I'll get started on this Husqvarna as soon as I get a chance. I'm just taking care of all the loose ends that I need to take care of before I start on a new project, probably that Husqvarna 2346 XLS. Uh, as you guys know, this one over here uh, runs great, has my rebuilt engine in it. I just did this a couple of days ago. Uh, but when we were running it, right, you guys noticed the left rear wheel was kind of wobbly, right? And I wanted to figure out whether or not it was actually wobbly because the transmission transaxle was bent or maybe just the tire or the rim was bent. So I jacked it up over here, right, as you can see. And then I'm just rotating this wheel and I want to look at the, I want to look at the shaft, right, and see if it's bent. And it doesn't appear to be bent because you can just see that the um, spacer in between the rim and on the transaxle is moving freely. If it was bent, it would probably just stay there, you know what I mean? And you don't notice any wobbling, right? But then if you look at the wheel, I'm sorry, the tire, look at the tire. There's a big bump right here. Right there, right there, right there. So the, the tire is warped. The tire has a bubble, if you will, right there. It pops up. I don't know if you guys can see it, but this tire, is something's wrong with it. It pops up right here. It's a big blob, lump right here. You can actually see it here, see? A bubble. Don't know why. So you guys know that I love the beefy tires, right? That's a 20 by uh, 10 by 8. <clears throat> so it's a 20 inch diameter wheel uh, tire. 10 inches in width and 8 is the size of the rim. I have this 20 by 10 by 8, exactly the same tire. It has like dry rot and cracks and stuff like that, but I think that maybe uh, I can fix that with ATF. The problem why I never used this one is because it's missing a stem, valve stem. So either it got pushed in or somebody had a, had a tube in here, you know what I mean? And it just fell in, you know, so I wasn't able to use it. So I'm gonna try to take it off the bead right now and uh, replace a valve. I got a new valve here. I just stick it in there and pull it out, you know? Check out the situation.
So uh, when I got it off the bead, I saw that there was a tube in there. So I tried to inflate the tube by pulling out the uh, stem. I got this tool where it's a, you screw it onto the stem and you can pull it out, you know? I got this from Samuel Sandoval. First time I'm ever using it. Seems to work great. Anyway, so I saw that the tube inside was leaking. So I decided that I'm just going to put some ATF in the tube. Pumped it up, didn't work, right? So then I just decided that I was gonna put the valve in there, put the valve in there. Coated the whole thing with a whole bottle. I put the whole bottle, 24 ounces in here, right? And as you can see, it's coming out the uh, dry rotted leak cracks. So this tire is so done, right? That um, even ATF is not gonna be able to plug this, right? The only way you're gonna be able to salvage this tire is if you had a tube. And how much does a uh, 20 inch tube cost? Almost $20. So I'm not gonna buy it. I'm just going to throw this away. That's right, me throw something away? Unheard of, right? But this tire, you know, I mean, I've got so many, you know. Just gonna throw it away, I'm gonna go find another one. So as you guys saw, I actually uh, am throwing away these two because they're absolutely dunsky, not savable at all. And uh, I'm just gonna start throwing things away because you know, I, I'm a pack rack, you know? I, I just, I'm a hoarder. Anyway, I took like uh, six or seven tires out from my shed. And uh, where am I going here? Four of them are, six of them are actually dunsky. You can't even repair them. So finally, I'm just gonna say, you know what? I gotta let go, you know? I'm never gonna use them. So these right here, they all have tubes in them. I tried repairing them several times. They're in such bad condition, you know what I mean? Really bad, that even the tubes suck too. So four of them are just like that. And I'm uh, just getting rid of them, you know? Uh, some guy wants to see one of my Toro recyclers. I'm gonna bring it to him later. Hopefully I'll have a sale today for $175, maybe 185, something like that. Um, so far, the two guys who wanted to see the snowblower are not answering me. So 
I'm not gonna chase them. I'm just gonna leave this here because I have put ATF in five of these wheels. And it looks like these two here, they're still coming out the sides, right? So that's not gonna work. I think maybe these might work, right? These seem to be holding air. So I believe that uh, the top two there match, maybe. Looks like it. So I just need two good ones. Oh, and that's a good one too. So one of those is gonna match this. So this is a good one, but it's yellow, right? I'll have to just paint that white or something like that. Um, and I'm just gonna replace these two because since this is good, but that's wobbly, right? I'm gonna take the wobbly one off, but then if I put one of those tires on there, it's gonna be way smaller than this one because this is a 20. Those are all like 18s, you know? So uh, I'll take them both off. T tomorrow I'll see which one of these hold air overnight. And then I'll take two of the like kinds and put them on here and that'll be that. I got a new carburetor for this and uh, I've decided that uh, I'm not gonna sell this to that nut who uh, moved around my neighborhood. You know, he's he's a pain in the ass, you know, so I'm just not gonna sell it to him. Uh, I got a new carburetor for that. Same Chinese uh, copied carb as this one, so I doubt that's gonna fix the problem, but uh, we'll see what happens, you know. It's not adjustable. I'm gonna put this on in another video and uh, see if this runs right. And then uh, this project will have to wait a little bit. As you know, I got this from my friend Mark from East Northport. This was one, uh, this came with that one over there, right? And uh, I don't think that this will take too much to get going, but of course I just jinxed it because I just said that, right? Needs a new front tire. Um, I have plenty of those. But yeah, lots of stuff to do, man. I'm just taking care of some things that I gotta take care of, you know? Get these out of the way so I can start a fresh project from scratch. Shout out to Ken at Ken Small Engines over in Connecticut for contributing a generous amount of money to the channel. Thanks for uh, donating to the channel, guys, and uh, keeping the videos coming every day. Also, shout out to John Hack over in Dallas, Georgia. Didn't know there was a Dallas, Georgia. Hey, you bought a couple of Dunsky stickers. Thanks a lot for the support, fellas. Buy a sticker. So this is my Toro Recycler with a Kohler XT675 engine on it. It runs great. It's been sitting in my backyard for a couple of weeks now. I had it listed for 185. Had a few bites, but nobody really, you know, flakes. They, they don't show up or they don't call you back or something. But uh, there's this one guy that's been bugging me for the past two days. He said he's going to meet me at 5 o'clock at the church. So uh, let's see if it starts up. It's been sitting for two weeks. Just rolled it out here. Sounds great. Now I'm just gonna have to shine it up a little bit because it's dirty. Two weeks worth of crap, you know what I mean? Using some super clean. Just the deck itself. Just for a quick wipe down. Grab an old rag. One quick wipe, just to make it look nice. This is handy just to have like in your van or something, you know what I mean? Gotta make it look nice before you sell it. Because the guy's gonna say, ooh, that's like new, bro. And I'm like, yeah. So there's no room for them to negotiate. It is what it is. So actually, another guy called me about the snowblower. I'm gonna go meet him now.
I asked him if he has a van, a trailer, or a uh, pickup. He says he has a trailblazer. So how about it, man? <clears throat> I had it listed for $200. Three years ago, I had it listed for $500 because believe it or not, I've actually sold those track drive Craftsman snowblowers for 500, you know? That was back when everybody was crazy, but then again, we did get crazy snow back then too. So I've been sitting on this thing for about three years or so and uh, nobody's really wanted it, you know, until I decreased it down to $200. Finally, the guy came to look at it, as you saw, you know, older gentleman, he liked it, you know, he knows about it, you know, and uh, so he says, how about 150? He says, come on, bro, you got to meet me uh, halfway or something. I go, how about 175? He's like, yeah, that's fair. $175. I, I am totally relieved that I got rid of that thing, man, seriously. Uh, and, and to sell a snowblower, too, you know, so big time stokage. Uh, later on, I might sell that uh, Toro recycler that's in my van now, too. If I sell that today, it would be a really good day, you know. Today, I was just fixing up some of the things that I have outstanding that I need to get to, you know. I got to fix all that stuff before I start working on this Husqvarna, you know. Then after the Husqvarna, I'll start working on that Red Craftsman back there, or a Poulon, yeah. Uh, so we put the valve cover, the push rods, and the uh, rocker arms back on that uh, Briggs V-Twin uh, 20 horsepower that I got from Nick from Medford. Hopefully that'll work someday. Um, also yesterday, you remember Brian, my friend from uh, Huntington, came by uh, to buy something. Uh, I think it was the um, Craftsman hood bagger, you know, bagger without the chutes, just the hood itself, you know. Uh, I sold that thing for like 20 bucks, whatever. It was just sitting in my yard. I didn't, I want to get rid of it, you know. But then he was walking around my garage and apparently he needs engines. So he saw my 18.5 power built engine, the one that I got from Mark from uh, East Northport and uh, also the Vanguard, quote unquote Vanguard one, you know, the one with the double shrouds on it. So I told him what happened, I told him the whole story. He says he wants them, and he says he offered me $300 for those two engines. And I says, I don't know, man, you know, engines are very hard to come by, you know what I mean? And uh, so then I says, I guess I'll let go of it for 350, you know? So he's like, bet. So I think he might go and come over and buy a couple of engines for me because I've got so many now, you know what I mean? And uh, I don't have tractors exactly every day to put those engines on. I know I'll regret selling the engines, but he's he's my boy from Huntington, you know what I mean? So he's always helped me out in the past, and if he needs engines, you know, I guess I'm all right for the 350 for two engines, you know. I told him, I'm not sure if they work or not, you know, I told him exactly what I did to him. He's like, yeah, man, I know, it's cool. He's a mechanic, so he understands. Uh, anyway, thanks a lot for joining me on today's hodgepodge of you know, small things that I had to do. Tomorrow I'll find out if any of those wheels actually hold air from the ATF. So I can actually have a non-wobbly set of rear wheels, you know what I mean, on that tractor. And then that'll be, uh, that'll be that. But uh, thanks for joining me on today's episode, fellas. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Remember to subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Instagram. Follow Super Clean um, Team on Instagram as well. And comment on yesterday's video, Super Clean. Enter that contest. I'm picking three winners. You're going to get a gift box of five of Super Clean's products. And honestly, I think they're great. Remember to tell your friends too. The more people that enter, the better chance they win. See you later.
time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.